the Peregrine Fund's World Center for Birds of Prey. It's one of the few places in the world where you can actually see California condors up close. These are not birds that you want on the ground close to you. They're designed to rip flesh off a bone. <laughs> Wanna go in? <laughs> He's the one that you'll really need to watch out for, is the one with the 24 on his wing. He just comes at you. These birds are purely scavengers, you know, and most scavengers, like vultures, have bald heads because of the way that they feed. Even though they're digging at carcasses, it allows them to be clean. They probably evolved during a Pleistocene when they were following large herds of large mammals around. And so you needed a large bird to break into, say, a woolly mammoth carcass, you know, or a dead saber-toothed tiger. And those were their contemporaries, you know, when they were evolving. They were, seemed relatively common in the 1920s. And then by the early 70s, they'd started to decline. You know, they were shot in the days in the 20s and 30s and 50s when people were shooting a lot of birds of prey. And there's an old story that in the gold rush days, they used their large feathers to store gold dust in. And then we recently discovered, you know, that lead is the main problem. A high-powered lead bullet will fragment into hundreds of pieces when it hits an animal. And condors end up finding animals that have been lost by hunters, eating those carcasses, and they end up dying from acute lead poisoning after that by 1982. They got down to 22 individuals, so it was decided by the Fish and Wildlife Service to bring those birds into captivity for breeding. What we do here is we, we're raising California condors in captivity and releasing them into the wild. We have close to 60 condors here right now. We basically record and monitor all of the behaviors that we have of the 59 condors on property. They grow really quickly from a 300 gram egg up to, you know, a 20 pound chick. And they get a nine and a half foot wingspan in less than six months time. Some of those young that are produced this year, we have 15 that will be going out into the field for release in the next six months to a year. All of our birds, the majority are released just north of the Grand Canyon on the Vermilion Cliffs National Monument. I think since 2003, 18 condors have been produced in the wild. Eight of those are still surviving. And so we went from 23 condors to 216 today. The problem we're having now is it takes a condor up to eight years to mature before they're actually breeding. And then in the wild, they lay one egg every other year. So you have a bird that's lived in the wild for eight years and suddenly it eats a carcass that's been contaminated with lead and you lose that eight-year-old bird, which is a real travesty. And, and really it's the only thing holding condors back at this point. The good thing about lead poisoning, a lot of the hunters on their own are volunteering to use copper bullets, which don't fragment, and therefore condors don't get poisoned. So that's very encouraging. You know, we get a lot of people, the reaction of, oh, wow, they are ugly birds. But I don't think there's any debate of how graceful and how beautiful these birds are if you were to see one out in the wild flying free. Um, they just, they're tremendous.